What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I, and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. Now, listen, guys, I want to talk about uh, Black Panther once again, because I know a lot of people are just not understanding uh, just how deep it goes, what's going on with this character. And I saw this article on ScreenRant.com, and I want to share some of it with you because I want to see if you're seeing what I'm seeing here. <laughs> and I know a lot of you are not going to be, but that's, that's all good. Like I said, I'm only here to promote uh, thought, okay, and contemplation. All right, so we have this article here, and it's very interesting what's happening with Black Panther when you're considering what's happening with him on screen, and then when you look at what's happening with him in the comics. Now, guys, you know I just did a video about this maybe a couple of months ago. No, maybe last month. I did a video talking about what's going on with him in the comics, this latest run of Black Panther, where it just seems like they're going out of their way to humiliate this character. And I want to get into later the reasons why I have to cry foul about this in particular. But this article here is entitled, Namor Finally Gets His Perfect Revenge on Black Panther. After decades of fighting, Namor finally humiliates Black Panther when the King of Wakanda is exiled from his own country. Now, this is the comic book run that's going on that's being written by one Mr. Uh, John Ridley, I believe it is. And this is Black Panther number 14. Now, like I said, in the last uh, episode or issue, I was talking about how Captain America came into this story and basically whipped T'Challa's ass, right? I mean, he beat him down and just completely just humiliated that man in his own country, in his own comic, you know, and the story continues here where you have Black Panther now being exiled from his own country. Not only is he no longer king, but he's being kicked out of his country in front of his greatest enemy, which is Namor. Now you guys saw the thumbnail. Namor is having a good old laugh in front of his very countrymen as he's being kicked out of his country. And it says here, <clears throat> in Black Panther number 14, written by John Ridley, Black Panther deals with the fallout of a truly awful mistake. He spearheaded a Wakandan uh, sleeper agent program. One of those agents has instigated another program designed to cripple the world's communications system. Because of his actions that inadvertently triggered a Wakandan civil war, T'Challa has lost his title of king, is kicked out of the Avengers, and even has been stripped of his Wakandan citizenship by the newly elected prime minister. Seeing his misfortune, Namor can only laugh hysterically at his crippled foe. And like I said, you see this in the uh, thumbnail where Namor is just having some perverse laugh at all of this in front of uh, T'Challa's face in his own comic, like I said before. Now, I'm going to make this quick, guys, because like I said, um, I had my problems with the killing of this character on screen. And let me see if I can give you uh, a little bit of context as to where I'm coming from in my frame of mind with this, why I feel like this is just so foul on so many different levels. Um, you might remember years ago, maybe even five years ago now, I did a video uh, pretty much showcasing how black children from all around the world were celebrating the arrival of T'Challa Black Panther on the big screen in the movies. Now, some people really didn't like to see that. You know, oh, it's just a movie. And I remember in the video, I was, I was saying, listen, if people can find, especially children, can find goodwill and inspiration from this, what are you objecting to? It can only help them. You know, it's a good thing that they're so happy. And I talked about that. They were dancing on their desk. They were dancing out in the street. They were loving that they were finally getting this story, you know, because obviously it meant something to them. So when you look at those children back then, you realize that a lot of them were invested in the character. And a lot of them probably went to go read the comic. All right. Because I know when, um, what was it? Uh, Into the Spider-Verse came out and I saw it with my son. I took him to a comic book shop. He wanted to see like the further adventures of Miles Morales, who is not Spider-Man. I understand that, okay? But we did enjoy the movie as father and son. All right, so he wanted to see this. So I went to the comic book shop to pick up some Miles Morales comics for him to read. And when we got them, of course, I had to read the comics first because I always screen what my son, especially when he was that young, uh, was seeing. What I saw was um, homosexual activity, you know, I saw a lot of things that I didn't really want my then something like six or seven year old son to be looking at. So I didn't get them. You know, I felt like I was betrayed 
by uh, what they were doing in the comics and everything, and they were just luring these kids in. Now, when you fast forward to these kids who really, really got turned on to the character of T'Challa in Black Panther, what has happened since then? You know, they were so happy to see this character, then they turned around and ended the character. You know, they killed the character without any thought. Now, we already covered that story from Nate Moore. He said, I didn't even consider it. We never even thought about recasting T'Challa. Never considered all of the children who were dancing on their desks and dancing in the aisles of the movie theaters and getting inspired by this character. Never thought about them. Well, Chadwick Boseman thought about them. So how do you twist this around to thinking that it's honoring Chadwick Boseman? But we're not going to go that angle right now. What we're going to talk about are the beach, is the betrayal of those children, right? Who might have, like my son was with Into the Spider-Verse, uh, inspired to pick up a comic. You know, maybe even get into the comics. What do you see in the Black Panther comic books? You're seeing Black Panther admittedly humiliated, uh, beat down, stripped of his kingdom, stripped of his uh, membership in the Avengers, totally, totally degraded and dehumanized with his greatest enemy laughing in his face. Now, I have no doubt at some point this is going to turn around, okay? I'm not reading this comic. I'm not picking it up. But I'm assuming that there's going to come a point. Maybe uh, Black Panther makes it all right. Maybe it was all some type of ruse or, you know, something like that that was going on. They'll probably turn this around somehow. But before that happens... You raked this character, this legacy character, the oldest black male Marvel superhero, completely through the mud. So any child that was turned on to Black Panther back in, what was it, 2018, I think the movie came out, maybe? Um, any child who came back for more got to see T'Challa die on screen and got to see him humiliated in the pages of the comic. In this this, this social climate where we talk about how representation matters and how, you know, people want to see people who look like them and everything like that. This is what you give them. I have to ask the question, why? Why is that? Does anybody ever think about that? Yeah, you might have got your shit off watching a movie that you enjoyed, you know, for all of the people out there who defend this movie. Angela Bassett, she got herself the Oscar nomination. Great. Ryan Coogler got all type of accolades. Great. Letitia Wright got to step up into the title role. Great! But what about the children that this was supposed to be for? That Stan Lee created the character for? To inspire those children who didn't have the things that they were looking for in their superhero, in their comic book genre? What about them? The ones who he specifically made this character for? Yes! They can find inspiration in Spider-Man, as I did. Yes! They can love Captain America, Superman, Batman, as I do. But this specific character, Stan Lee was most proud of in the MCU because of what it gave to these children who found themselves and felt themselves to be marginalized. What do they find as they look deeper into the character, as they get turned on to the character? They find a dead character. They find a humiliated character, a dehumanized character. And nobody, except me in this case, is asking the question, why? Why is this so easy for us to accept? I don't know, but there it is. But I'll tell you one thing, it's not going to stop because we don't hold them to any type of standards. This is what happens when you just want to be seen. That's all that happens. This is because that's all you demand. I want to be seen. I just want to feel like I'm being seen. Okay, you're being seen. Doesn't matter what you're being seen as or how you're being seen, but you want to be seen. Congratulations. You're being seen, beaten, battered, dehumanized. Enjoy. Get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this, guys. Thank you for listening. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.